What's going on everybody and welcome back to another amazing episode of the podcast. We have a very heavily requested video coming to you guys today. We have Carolyn Wise back on the podcast and uh, we are going to talk about changes that happen in your pond uh, as it goes towards the warmer weather. Now this is a subject that people touch on in little three minute YouTube videos and I've done a bunch of those myself. But here's somebody who actually knows the science and we're going to take two steps further into this subject. So that, you know, when you're sitting outside having a, an iced tea with your buddy and he asks what all this stuff is that's going on in your pond, you can actually uh, impress them a little bit. So I learned a bunch. Hope you learn a bunch. This is uh, the podcast brought to you by Webs Online. Let's see what she has to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so in... Uh in this time of change in our pond, I wanted to get uh, an expert back. O on our very first episode, uh, we had Carolyn Wise from Microblift answer a customer question as to uh, what spring and summer treatment actually does scientifically. And we enjoyed her answer so much, we thought we'd make that question a little bit more obtuse. So Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. My question to you is, generally, what is the, the science behind a pond as it goes through its spring change? Ah, there's a couple of things. First, the biological oxygen demand is going to increase as everything becomes more lively. The fish need more oxygen. The bacteria become active. Plants are going to start to grow and, and produce their, uh, they're going to use oxygen in their photosynthesis. So everything needs more oxygen. Um, as the weather gets warmer, you're going to, uh, going to have to increase your flow of oxygen, turn on the waterfalls, get your circulation going, and um, add bubblers if you, if you have them. And uh, remember that there's going to be more organic waste being produced. And that's a big thing. The waste has to be treated or else you're going to end up having a really bad summer with your pond. Right. And, and speaking from Microblift, I can tell you that we have, have two products that are Microblift PL and, and Microblift Sludge Away that will do both do a great job of not only reducing the organic waste that you've got, it's robbing oxygen from your pond and increasing the oxygen that's available to your fish and, and your plants that are in there. So both of those are oxygen increasers and organic uh, removers. So you can, you can increase your, the health of your pond by using those two products. Interesting. So basically you have like this dormant, cold, water and then it just kind of comes to life in the spring so you know obviously we want to get rid of the sludge and we want to create positive beneficial bacteria for the fish if we didn't do that what would just happen like what do you think what would be the the negative outcome without our involvement because this isn't a natural pond right so we have to right. we have to kind of play that that nature uh effect we have to be the cause and effect of of a healthy pond so what would happen if we just did nothing well, there's a few things that has to happen in that. Number one, the fish are going to spawn. When mm. the spawning happens, you're going to have a, a sharp increase in ammonia. Now, you have nitrifying bacteria naturally occurring in your pond um, after the first year, after the second year. And, and your, your, their nitrifying bacteria require um, a KH, which is carbonate alkalinity. Is that what um, they eat or something? Well, they don't eat it. It's like the spark plug in the car. It's not the gas, it's the spark plug. All right, it's the catalyst, if you will. And if they don't have enough, they use, let's like, 7.1 uh, milligram milliliters to remove one milliliter of ammonia. So you, if the more ammonia is being produced, the um, more KH you need. So instead of watching your pH, you need to watch your KH. Pretty soon, the KH is going to go bye-bye um, and your, your fish are going to suffer. Um, without the cir proper circulation, 
the bacteria are still going to use the oxygen on the bottom. You already have bacteria in there. It's going to be naturally grown, but it's not going to, not going to do the job that the PL and the sludge away are going to do, because sludge away also increases the oxygen. Your fish are gonna overpopulate your pond. I mean, this all happens very quickly. And as the water increases, uh, the temperature increases, um, you're gonna want, wind up with a, what I call a pH crash. As okay. that K KH drops down below 80 parts per million, you have a pH crash. So um, I've, I've heard from people um, all this past year who've had, had that, they say, my fish are dying. Um, I, uh, I don't know what's happening to them. No, they're lying, dying of something very healthy. There's no signs of any illness. There's no signs of any sores. But they, uh, but, but I'm losing two, three, five a day. Wow, what an awful phone call. I hope that, I hope you get other phone calls other than that, by the way. But you know, if you don't have the circulation going and the aeration in there, yeah. they, have, they, have no, they have no resource. And if you aren't doing either water changes or, or monitoring that KH so that you can intervene, um, you don't have that. And if you aren't using, using something to clean the bottom of your pond, like the PL and the such a way, um, something's gonna happen to your fish. Understood. All right, so you guys now know what should be happening and what the science is of a healthy spring pond with your influence. And uh, let's call it a pond nightmare if you guys were just to leave it alone. And uh, one of the biggest takeaways here is, uh, and I think I heard you say this, I'm gonna paraphrase, this all happens really fast. It does happen fast. So make sure you guys are staying on top of everything. And Carolyn, Thank you so much for answering this question. This was just kind of bouncing around in my head. Like, I don't know of anybody who just did a science experiment on their own pond in their own backyard and their own property, but I was always curious, like, when, what, what would happen if I just stopped? You know, obviously I promise you, I'm not remember, gonna stop the call, you're fine. And remember one other thing, uh, it's probably about 95% of the ponds out there mm -hmm. are already overstocked. Oh, that's interesting. Do you think we could have uh, you back later to talk about how to uh, properly assess if your pond's stocked properly or not? You can. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And uh, guys, that concludes our interview with Carolyn Wise from Microblift. You guys can find all of their products on webs online. We'll put a link down below. And uh, thank you again for your time. You're welcome. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys learned something because I know when I walked away from that conversation, I had a better understanding of what's going on in my pond during that time of year. You guys can find anything you need for the warmer weather, the changes, and basically any pond supplies you need in general at websonline.com. Till next time, take care and enjoy your pond.